What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Thomas Gallery and today's discussion is the evolution of art. Okay, now art over the years have taken on many different meanings. Art means a lot of things to a lot of people. Okay, but I want to talk about how did we get from the cave paintings on the walls or like just you no know, figures of animals to digital art and this is this is a couple of couple of tens of thousands of years many 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 many, many eons of time they're going to try to condense in a small amount of time so from my studies, from my viewpoint, from my studies over the years, what we would consider art in ancient times, by ancient I mean, you know, many thousands of years and longer. Art served a more practical purpose. Art wasn't meant for aesthetic purposes. It was meant back then to literally describe the environment. Okay, like you see paintings on caves where you see a group of people with spears and you no know, box, and then you see on the other part of the wall very rudimentary, very, very basic images of animals. And the image was simply to depict hunting, okay, it was to depict people of that time early humans hunting the animals that were in the area in which they live see now that wasn't <clears throat> that wasn't meant to that would have when they made that painting they weren't thinking about oh thousands of years from now people are going to look and say hmm this piece speaks to me this piece is you know the line the form the shapes the colors no they were thinking this is a way to remember our hunt and where we hunt and what is around here. When you put the images on a wall or on paper or on stone of some sort or wood or whatever, you are marking a time. You are marking a, a period of time. Okay? And you may see cave paintings of the hand is it? I forgot where it is, but it's a painting of somebody just blew some kind of paint on their hand, and the, the outline, the negative space came out on the wall. That could have could very well be the first time someone actually made something that was for self. The hand. This is my hand put on the wall, and there you go. Then you have the art for quote unquote religious purposes. Like you may have art you see the well, you you have you have images on the walls of Egypt. Okay? Or commit. And in their temples. Those weren't meant for sake purposes either. Those weren't meant for just the purpose of saying, oh well, these people, this is the this is the next war hall. No. These were images showing their lifestyle, like how they lived. It was showing veneration to their deities or to whatever they would consider their supreme beings. It was to show it was to show everyday life. It was it was the ancients ancient ancient newspaper. It wasn't meant for just looking to look. It was literally meant to tell a story. Like these images aren't just on the wall to be there. These people put these on here to tell a specific story, to tell a story about what they believed would be the afterlife. Like when a, when a person dies, what do they? What do the people who are alive making the images believe the afterlife will look like? Would you need anything? 
are there any are there any beings that you may encounter on your way to the afterlife the fact that you even have the concept of an afterlife what happens to you after you die these weren't just for looking purposes these all served a functional pragmatic f uh, function okay they were made to depict their reality now, everyone's reality is different you know if you wanted to explain certain weather phenomena like a thunderstorm or rain or earthquake but you couldn't see what caused it but you know it happened all you all the people would do were, would be was to personify in other words give those events human attributes and human like forms so that human can understand nature that's why you have Thor as a thunder god now we all know now that thunder isn't made by a person we know that however if humans are trying to tell the stories about their weather conditions in ways that other humans can understand what do you do you put those you put those events in a human form like Poseidon is the god of the sea and earthquakes so if a, if a person were to feel an earthquake and then see a tsunami coming they would want they would make a correlation they would say okay when the earth when the, when the ground shakes a big wave comes what is causing that i can't see what is causing that but something is causing it what is it hmm it must be a god that controls the earthquakes and the seas what does it look like we did we give it an image and call it poseidon or neptune we give it an image that we can understand and since we un since we can only think we only think through our human senses our human ideas our human mind we rationalize no, we, we rationalize events that are beyond our understanding in human f so we put it in human form okay that's a religious purpose because these things were seen as deities they were deified they were seen as gods or godlike is not really the whole the whole purpose of making art for the sake of human enjoyment is a very very new phenomenon relatively speaking Shoot it. for most of human existence art what had a basic realistic function which pretty much was to interpret your environment to interpret the literally interpret the environment in which you live try to make the world around you make sense to you and you put it in visual form that has been the modus operandi for most of the visual creation that humans have ever made for most of human existence that's been the reason it's not really until you start getting to like a thousand years I would say I'm, be, I'm a thousand I'll say more maybe you know three thousand on you start getting images popping up that are starting to deal with solely the human ego meaning I want to make this to please me I want to make this artwork to to please me to please my five senses and to make other people like what I do you don't have to have a certain purpose I'm making this for my own enjoyment not to please the gods not to explain the harvest but I'm making this for my self-interest my ego you really start seeing this boom when you start getting to the Renaissance period you start seeing portraits self portraits and portraits of other people where that where the person now wants to venerate themselves for most of human history humans have venerated their environment have deified their environment now you start seeing instances where that person wants an image of themselves being deified 
you see him opposing, he's just very stoic and, you know, postures to demonstrate to the world that I am important. The humanistic period, where the human form itself started being seen as a god itself. This is, the human form is the most perfect form there is in creation. And so we have Leonardo da Vinci's uh, The Vitruvian Man, that the arms, the arm length, I'm uh, sorry, the wingspan of the, the human arms are the same, are, perf are the perfect height as the human, you know, all that. But we know it's not actually, it's not anatomically true. But the idea that the most perfect form in creation is the human form. And then we as humans want to show that not to not to nature, not to animals, but we want to show that the human form is the most pure form there is to other humans. No one's going to make a self-portrait and show it to a dog. Like, here, here you go, dog. You must strive to be like this. You must strive to walk upright like us humans. No. Humans made portraits of themselves and other important people for other humans to see and enjoy. Okay? We want we wanted to make sure that other humans knew we were important. Not make nature think we're important. We wanted other humans to think we were important. So you start seeing a lot of self-aggrandizement. You know, a lot of, look at me, I'm important, and I'm going to show you by making an image that depicts me as important. Okay? That's when you start going to what is considered art now. And as of right now, that has taken over the definition of art. Art for your, art for, the idea of making art for yourself, making yourself important, is a total 180 from the visual creations that were made back then. I'm not going to call the other, I'm not going to call the Egyptian wall paintings art because they didn't consider it art. There were skilled workers that made visual images based off of nature to understand nature and to put it down as a record for understanding nature that is not what is the art, the definition of art now is not that the definition of art now is it's a visual media based on a skill that interprets one's own self you want yourself now to be in the place of look, the importance of nature back then. Man has taken over that particular spot in importance. We have made ourselves the centerpiece. Not the weather, not the faces of the moon, not the grazing patterns of the wildebeest, not the flood, not the floods, you know. Not the thunderstorms, not the rain, but we've made our we put ourselves in that place, okay, of high recognition. So, and it is still that way. Now, you can, if you choose to, make art that venerates nature or shows the migration patterns of salmon. You could. But see, thousands of years ago, there wasn't really an option because thousands of years ago, it was important to put those images on there because it was based on your survival. If you went to a cave and saw images of buffalo or wildebeest there, back then it would say, okay, whoever was here at that particular time these animals were with them, so they had a food source. That's important to know, because I don't want to die. And maybe if these animals were here when people painted these things, these animals can still be here. So I may want to stay, 
because these animals could come back. See, that's a very practical idea. It's based on survival. Art now is not based on survival. No one is no one is going to die if they make a painting of buffalo on a canvas. You go to you just go to the store and get some hamburgers or whatever you want to get. So the whole idea of survival, paint painting for survival. That whole idea is gone. No one is painting to find out the grazing the grazing patterns of the, of buffalo or the wildebeest. No one is doing that now. No no one is gonna say, okay, let me paint let me paint these this set this these salmon strips on the stream because these salmon live in the stream, so I need to know where they are. So let me paint this so I can remember. No one is doing that. Okay. The idea of survival is gone. It is now majority based on ego and aesthetics. How this looks, how this makes me feel. You know, the impressionistic period, the you know, surrealism. That is based off how the mind interprets an environment in terms of how it looks to me. Not based, not based off of I'm going to die if I don't eat. Let me paint this. It's based off of, well, you know, this makes, when I see this, I think of lilac and cerulean, cerulean or I think of violet. No, no one, no one, no one cares. No one cared about that thousand years ago. No one cared. Okay. So that is the path that art has taken. And who knows a thousand or two thousand or five thousand years from now. How would, what would be the definition of art in, in the future? And how would they look back at us 5,000 years from now? Would they say that, oh, Christopher Thomas painted these things for this purpose, or humans painted these things for this purpose? We don't do that now. We paint, we, we, do, the, we, do, these thing, we do this thing called art for this purpose. They used it for this purpose 5,000 years ago. And 10,000 years ago, man made, man made visual works for this purpose. You know, will it change? Cause I mean, it evolved from, from pay, cave paintings to Mona Lisa to billboards. So who's to say that it won't change again? That is the evolution of art. All right? It, it's it's a time and change. Or it's change. The, pretty much the definition of evolution is change over time. Everything changes over time. That includes art. So what would art look like in the future? Good question. Think about that. Peace.